All right, 2 Kings chapter 7. Again, let's call this one Fugitive to Father, but subtitle it Wait, because in this chapter, Elisha is going to have to calm the king of Israel down because the king of Israel, in the last chapter, wanted Elisha's head for the condition in which Israel finds itself quite possibly having the very same army, or at least a part of the army that he let go, uh, now coming back to seize the city and having the people in a desperate, desperate famine again. And so at the beginning of this chapter, Elisha is simply going to reassure the king by uh, saying, if you'll simply wait, the Syrian army is not going to be a problem very much longer. And the way that we will actually see that is through the eyes of four lepers who are at the gate of Samaria, faced with some real tough choices. Uh, if we go back into the city, there's famine in the city. Uh, if we just wait here, we're just basically waiting here to starve and die as well. And if we go forward to the Syrians, they might just kill us. Understanding that the reason why they're probably at the gate in the first place is because they're lepers and lepers by law, we're supposed to stay away from a place where they could spread the contamination of leprosy to the rest of the city. And so they are probably in an even tougher situation than everybody else who is starving and struggling in the city. And so faced with those horrible options, they are simply going to choose to move forward into the Syrians and say, look, if they kill us, they kill us. But that's probably our best option at this point. And so they are going to be pleasantly surprised and relieved to find that the Syrian army has fled because God has simply chased them away with the sounds of chariots that convinced them that they were facing a much larger army than what could have been defending the city of Samaria. And so these four lepers, even though they were probably in a worse predicament than other folks in the city, are in the best position to get the news first, and that's what they do. But in the process of eating and collecting the spoil, their conscience gets to them when they realize we can do better than getting full and hoarding stuff while everybody in the city is still struggling. And so they decide that they are going to go tell the king of Israel, who is going to uh, think it's too good to be true. He's going to be like, that's an ambush that they're setting. And so he's not going to believe the lepers, probably because they're lepers, and they probably aren't the most highly regarded folks in Samaria. And so he is reluctant to make a move until one of his servants says, look, why don't we at least send out scouts to find out whether or not what they're saying is true? at which point they're going to send out scouts who indeed confirm that the Syrians are gone, consistent with the word of Elisha. If they would simply wait, the Syrian army wasn't going to be a problem very much longer. However, there is one individual in the king's court who is not going to get to appreciate it very much because when Elisha brought word to the king that things would be okay if he would just wait, verse 2 says this, Then the captain, on whose hand the king leaned, said to the man of God, If the Lord himself should make windows in heaven, could this thing be? But he said, you shall see it with your own eyes, but you shall not eat of it. And it seems like an innocent enough question unless we go back and get context in chapter one, where we see uh, Elijah dealing with uh, three captains of 50 men in sequence coming to him. The first two seeming to talk to him rough. And we said uh, the last one getting the bass out of his voice, saving his life and the life of his 50 men. And this chapter does not necessarily tell us that this captain spoke to Elisha in any kind of way that would have been considered out of line, but he might have. And also understanding that the king of Israel was ready to kill Elijah before this interaction where Elisha is telling him to just wait. Uh, it stands to reason that this captain might have questioned Elijah in a way that might have lacked the kind of wisdom that might have saved his life. Understanding that chapter 7 gives us an opportunity once again to see the value in wise servants, lepers, who even though they might have been outcasts in Samaria were able to put their own personal hurts aside long enough to make sure that everybody had a chance to find relief from the famine. Likewise, a servant who was wise enough to approach the king in a way that persuaded him to overcome his fears and actually send scouts out to make sure that the famine was not prolonged unnecessarily. But as we mentioned before, our last two chapters for this week are going to show us the way in which even wise, high character servants are only going to be able to do so much in situations where both Samaria and Israel are faced with kings that aren't leading with high character as well.